to your ego. That's why I should have So what you're saying is your way. I'm not going to say it. 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 i am not going to say it 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 i am not
Well, well Christy is pretty good. good. Over five years. Yeah, because I was like, am I going to be able to get promoted? Only five years. That's just to shut you up. Oh, right, because if you're going to get... Oh, I'll have 100 this year. Then I get 3,000. What's this? I mean, I don't want to, like, go ahead. I'll get that. Six months. Six months. Of course. Of course. I'm coming to you. I'm leaving. I'm going to this company. No. You didn't say. You didn't say how much. It's just possible. Yeah. There's no no. It's a Okay, what we got, guys? Can you see okay over there? Yeah. Um, we have two no deals. That's okay to have a no deal. Uh, that is, uh, that's an indication that the boss was being too hard nosed. He threatened to quit. The boss is supposed to, under this scenario, to give in and to capitulate to get your raise. Did anybody get the full fifteen thousand over over a year or two? She got it in five years. I got it five. You got it in five, but the time value of money is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we may we we may all be dead in five years. <laughs> You got the 15 uh, bonuses for great. Uh, here's a good raise, six to eight thousand in 90 days, uh, based on good numbers. And and you you know you're going to get the numbers because you've been getting them. Uh, so that's a good job there. Uh, those of you that got what what is this one? Thousand every six months for three years. Basically, you could have done. That's six. Six thousand over three years, right? Over time, uh, two thousand and five percent raises. What does that come out to? Uh, this will be like uh, this will be forty-two thousand, but five percent increase every year. So the base salary will increase by two thousand. Okay, another couple of grand a year. And then we add five percent. Okay, now. Employees, you're making not much money compared to your peers that you're doing the same job with. Is that fair? No. Okay. What, what do, do you all think, employees, that you negotiated yourself into a position where you're going to feel good about going to work for the next three years? Raise your hand if you think you're going to feel that you got enough that you're going to be, feel good about going to work there for the next three years. Um, yeah, five thousand a year for two years. So ten. You're still going to be five thousand below your peers because every year they're going to be <laughs> oh, getting. Right. They're going to get more. They're going to be getting more. They're not going to be stable. <laughs> uh, 
you feel good about it? Yes. Um, what I did was that, you know, the, the, the question says I'm not as old as the other managers. Why not? Well, I thought it's um, in here. Experience. Yeah, the experience yeah, wise. Your experience is not the same, but your your competency, your scores are good, as good as they are. So aside the the first um, three thousand five hundred, I'm getting a possible three six thousand to eight thousand. Yeah, if my figures are still good, right, just three months. So, okay. so I think you did, you negotiated a good job. I think most of you all could have negotiated harder and gotten to the point where you feel comfortable. You noted on the sheets that I asked you to complete at the end of it is, do you think the relationship between you and your boss is going to be better or worse after this session? Uh, I'm assuming most of you on this side of the table put worse. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't put worse and you didn't get much money, then um, you're kind of wimpy. <laughs> How do you, you do? <laughs> so I'm trying to. I'm trying to. We've got it somewhere here. What else do? We, what did we learn from this exercise? What did we learn about the process of negotiating a raise? It's hard. It's hard. Who has the power? You or you? The boss. The boss has the power. They have to check, right? But you have power because. He doesn't want to lose a great worker. You all didn't believe that you were that you had any power. For those of you that believed it, you could you could push it on. Put your hand back there. Well, I was just gonna say uh, leverage because she kept leveraging a position with another company. And I think that's good. That's that's her power. And if she doesn't threaten the leverage, then it's no good. If you've got it but don't use it. The other side's not going to really understand okay. Yes? At what point do we know that the threat is an empty threat? <laughs> <laughs> That's in your gut. Because it's, it's my, in your gut. My employee was, was telling me that she already has an offer. She mm -hmm. has an offer from another company and wow. the price difference is 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> and she's ready, she was ready to leave right now. She was ready. From the first, that's what she said, and she stick on to that. <laughs> and you still didn't give her any money? I did. I <laughs> gave her 5,000 <laughs> now. And then I said, in two years, we'll see how it will go, and then I'm exactly. afraid to get well, I tried to show her that her leaving, she, if she, she, she leaves here and go to another company, maybe it's a risky <coughs> move. And yeah. she may be fired after three right. months. Right. And, if she, and she said that, that's fine. Then she would have been <laughs> 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 Yes. Now, could you have, if, let's say for instance, if it's Jerry, Jerry Jones, and I was prepared for him to say that, and my response would have been, show me what they're offering you. Because I, he's trying to call my bluff, right. and I'm going to call his bluff. Well, he doesn't have a bluff yet. He's mm -hmm. got a threat, but he's bluffing. Mm -hmm. So you, you're legitimate to call the bluff, mm -hmm. and he's legitimate to play the bluff, mm -hmm. but at some point, if you play a bluff, you got to be willing to follow up or else you lose exactly. credibility. Exactly. So uh, I have always felt, as a lawyer, uh, that bluffing is not a technique I felt comfortable with unless I was, if I was absolutely willing to follow through with it, it's not a bluff. A bluff is when it's an empty threat, like you, you phrased it, an empty threat. That's an empty threat, and if you get called on it, you look like an idiot. So I, I don't like looking like an idiot, so I rarely would bluff. I would say things like, well, you know, it is a good job market out there these days, and uh, I feel comfortable that with my skill set that I can find something that's comparable. And that's not a bluff. That's, that's a statement of fact. But if you say you already have a job when you don't, um, that's a bluff. And some people feel comfortable bluffing. Some people negotiate in that fashion. It seems to me that that you run the risk of losing all credibility within that organization if you have an empty threat. Because the boss is going to talk to his or her peers about the same thing. Okay, what we've got now is about a 10 minute, I guess, 
vignette of a guy who's asked doing this exact same thing that you all were just doing. We'll see mm -hmm. what, what he achieves with a, a boss that doesn't want to give him a raise. It's about a 10 minute vignette, then we'll stop, then we'll take a short break, and then we've got another good exercise too. If I can make the machine work, I will start. <coughs> found an option they can both live with. As you've just seen, one of the most powerful uses this of independent is standards of is to help the other side persuade their constituents. And of course, they may help you persuade your constituents as well. When interests conflict and you can't find a creative option that satisfies both sides, be prepared to use independent standards to persuade both parties that an agreement is one that treats them fairly. Interests, options, and standards are a great way to deal with the substantive issues in negotiation. But negotiators are people first. Dealing with the people issues in negotiation is the subject of our next segment. Segment four. People. Constantly in a negotiation, you're trying to focus on the problem, you're trying to look at the interests or the options or the standards, and the people get in the way. Their emotions, their egos, their different ways of seeing things, their communication patterns. Constantly, you're focusing on the problem, the people get in the way. People make two assumptions. Either they assume that, look, I've got to be soft on the people. I need this relationship. And that means being soft on the problem, giving in, making concessions. Or they make the opposite assumption. I've got to be hard on the problem. I need to get this. I need to get this for my organization or for myself. If that means being hard on the people, well, that's, that's real life. We're in the world of business. We're not holding hands. What we find successful negotiators doing is rejecting both those assumptions. What they do is they separate the people from the problem, almost like drawing a line in their heads between the person and the problem, in order then to simultaneously be soft on the people, hard on the problem. In fact, the harder you need to be on the problem, the softer you need to be on the person if the person is not going to get in the way of dealing with the problem. First part about emotions, I think, is to be aware of your own, be sensitive to where they are, feel them, and then be sensitive to the emotions of the other party. Try to acknowledge them, see if you can't understand how they're feeling. We sometimes think we're taught as children it's naughty to be angry. There's nothing wrong with feeling anger. It's like feeling hot or feeling cold. It's a feeling. How you deal with anger is something else. People have a tendency to believe that it, when they disagree about w something in negotiation, one side has to be right or the other side, and somebody has to be wrong. Usually that's not true. If people feel strongly about an issue, it's much more likely that they have facts you don't have that they see the situation in a different way, which is perhaps partially valid, perhaps even as valid as the way that you see it. Before you get into a, a heated argument back and forth about who's right, it's better to say, how do they see it? Is there some piece of what they see that if I knew would make a difference to me? So what I've heard are there emotion problems as people problems. There are problems of perception, the fact that people see things differently. Right. And the third category is communication problems. Most people think of communication as my telling you. We think of the right. communication industry as broadcasting. A great communicators are people who talk and tell people things. I would say if communication is the problem, half of the problem is listening. In fact, the more important half is listening. Because unless I hear you, unless I understand where your head is, what you're thinking and feeling, I'm shooting it in the dark. I don't know what. So listen, active listening. Listening, acknowledging your feelings, acknowledging the other side's feelings, putting yourself in the other side's shoes, none of them involve making a concession to the other side. We deal with, the key point is to deal with people problems, with people techniques, and then deal with the problem on its merits. In the next negotiation, John Nathan is being asked for a raise by a talented young associate of his. John wants to avoid the raise. In fact, he wants to avoid discussing the problem by threatening the relationship, by indicating the relationship is at stake. He is deliberately, although maybe not consciously, mixing up the relationship with the substance. And Tim, asking for the raise, 
is fairly good in saying that the amount of the raise should not depend on the quality of the relationship. Let's watch. I've been here for 18 months. I've been working really hard. I came to this firm because I value your advice and what you've taught me so much. And I think that now I'm looking around, I'm seeing other people in the firm coming in, hiring laterally at higher salaries than I'm getting. I'm wondering perhaps, you know, is there a reason for this? Is there a reason that I'm not being paid comparably to other people in my position? Well, I, I, I hear what you're uh, saying. You know that we're flying still a little over the ground. We're trying to take this mm -hmm. thing up to the 40,000 feet we think we've got to be flying at. You're doing uh, a lot to help us get there. But you and I, you know, we haven't, been, we haven't talked money much. We, we knew coming in that we um, didn't have a lot of money to spend uh, except on the projects and on the stuff that we're doing that are making us feel like we're contributing to something, making a difference out there. Um, money brought up between us at this time just seems inappropriate somehow. I'm uncomfortable about it. Um, in what way? I'm sorry. Is there... You know, I began by saying I'm proud of you, and I do feel corny about it. I mean, I do feel like your uncle or your dad. I mean, I brought you along. I think, I, I, I think you'd say that you've learned quite a bit from my Absolutely. Interest. If I in any way implied that the relationship was not important to me or was not the most valuable thing, I am sorry about that. It is, I've learned so much from you, and it's something that no matter where I work or whatever I do, what I learn from you is going to be so important to me. But I think we need to separate that, that somehow our working relationship and the work I do for this firm needs to be looked at separately. And my salary requests are really for what I think I can contribute to the work of this firm. Okay, so you just want to talk money, basically. <laughs> yes, yeah, so money in terms of what I can do for the company, what I can contribute. No, I understand. I, mean, I talk money to people all day long. You heard me talk money. I, 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 that, half of the business is talking money. It's the, the part of the business you know that I like least. Um, the part of the business I like most is what we do together. Um, fine. Uh, we're going to become merchants, basically, for the next ten minutes and have a conversation about dollars and cents. Is that what you're asking me to do? I don't know if I would use the word merchants in the sense well, that... it's a haggle, basically. It's a haggle. You could be a fishmonger, I could be a housewife. I, I don't even haggle. I don't like the word haggle that much either. I think what I would like to do is to say, yes, I am very committed to this company. I would like to see on a work based relationship, something that is comparable salary-wise. And I don't want to bring in our relationship and the reasons I came to this firm, what I've learned from you, as combined as to keep them separate. Okay, how much do you want? Well, I look at the other people you've brought in recently who are in my position, who are laterally hired, who are about $40,000, and that's the reason I think it's fair for the work I do. You're being paid $32,000 now, Tim. Yep. Thirty-two five. Mm -hmm. And you're asking for a seven and a half thousand dollar raise now. Listen carefully. Right. I need to hear one thing, Clue. Are we in ultimatum mode here? Are you saying, pay me the forty thousand dollars, give me the seven and a half thousand dollar raise today, or I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm up the next step on the ladder. Is that where we are? Absolutely not, John. I would never leave you today. I would never walk out on you. That is something that I just would not do. And purely because we value our friendship so much, I would never do anything like that to you. All I want is to be treated fairly. All I ask is that I be treated for my work the same way anyone else in your firm is treated. Tim was good there. It's amazing. Every time John would bring something up, he'd, he'd reaffirm to John how much the relationship meant and then say, but how much I'm paid is just a question of what's fair in the office. I don't want to feel ripped off. It's almost like when someone says, trust me. That's right. You should answer, of course I trust you. And common business practice would suggest that I run this by my lawyer. Now let's watch a negotiation between... Okay. Were you as good as Tim? Front row, front row people. Uh, what, what did Tim say when he asked him, are you, are you out of here today? What was Tim's response? No. 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 Not not today. today. Not today. <laughs> so he was saying not today, but he wasn't saying no. next week. He wasn't saying I'm willing to take your, your second tier money for the rest of my life. Uh, do you think Tim's going to get the raise? Yeah. More, likely. Yeah. more likely. More likely he will because uh, he kept shifting the issue back to fairness. The boss was talking about soft stuff like 
my father, my uncle, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and my housewife. Uh, uh, that that's a tough negotiation. The first uh, lawyer that I worked for was very much like this man. He was very difficult, very hard to work with, but a great lawyer, a great mentor. And it wasn't until another lawyer came in the firm and, and they had to pay me what they had to pay to bring the other young lawyer in that I was able to get the increase that I needed. They did pay me fairly once I got a counterpart, but I, I was being underpaid about this much. They had to go to the market to get somebody, so they had to raise me. Anyway, <laughs> it, it kind of works that way most of the time. Why don't we take about a, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. This is a 15-year-old video. The hairstyles are obviously uh, of another generation, but for some reason, even though this is sort of the gold standard, they've never updated this video, and they've never produced a second one uh, video with the modern hairstyles. So I apologize for that, <laughs> but, the, but the content is really good with all of this. Let's take about a 10-minute break. And then we'll watch one more vignette that I want to show you. And then we'll, we've got another problem to do, another negotiation to do. And we'll finish up about 10.30. Did they serve you guys coffee? Or do you have to scramble for it? Oh, we have a coffee machine right over here. Oh, that's show right. you to it. I don't think. I, I used to be up here. 